toward the all right, class, welcome. Welcome to Monday. Just a quick schedule update here. I did send you guys a a uh, study guide for the final. Is that right? That's in there? Yep. And I try to put a good comprehensive, all the good stuff in it. Uh, for this test, exam three, I really just want you guys to really get a handle of just any kind of derivative I throw at you, you guys know how to do it. That's that's so the that's essence the of test, it. Uh -huh. It's going to start out there simple, x squared plus 5x plus 2, and it'll reach all the way up to logarithmic uh, derivatives. We good? It's just a uh, just a skills test. You guys know how to do it. We good? Okay. Uh, next is uh, that's Wednesday. No on campus school Friday. We're all going to see each other virtually for a while. We good? And I'll try to grade those exams by Friday and at least. So if you can send them to us before the final, that would be really helpful. And yeah, oh, that's right. And that's what I wanted you guys to talk about here. So um, the final is set up for. Yeah, let, let me jump to here. I did want to change it up. So here's what I'm going to do. You guys talk to me here. And I don't know your guys' schedules either. I put written final or maybe the verbal final on Monday. Because if we do the verbal final, oh. then what we can do is I can give you guys your test back. We can talk about it. And then you take your then you take your semester final here, your written final here. Does that, is that mind better? That as long as we get the problems for the verbal final, we have them. They're on the, the <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. I see that then. Okay. Yeah, they're on the um, final. So, yeah. so verbal okay. final, or actually I say oral final, duh. That's what it should be. It's oral final and written final. So oral final is, and let's go back just real quickly here, just so you guys have it. But they're all like your big ones. These two know what it is because they've gone through the experience in trigonometry class here. I'm still a little confused about how that works. Uh -huh. You basically have to do a problem that if you make any mistakes, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you're explaining a problem on the homework. It has to be a complete explanation of it. Like what formula did you use? Why did you use this formula? Okay. And then you should not make any mistakes as you're presenting it. That's... So it would be something like the problem with like the chain rule and then you have to explain or is it like more specific with like specific numbers or is it like concepts that you're explaining? It's like the, some of the problems are like find the derivative of f of x equals square root of 2x. Oh, is so you like think we have to do all the problems beforehand and we can bring notes or is it no notes? Just like no notes. Problems. It's memorized. Uh huh. It's, it's not Go as on. bad as it sounds. You know, I'm trying to have to memorize it like every step because as long as you know how to do it, you just do it. But like don't leave out degrees symbols or something because, you know. You can't get like slum tumbling around, but you don't have to like have the speech memorized. Okay. Do we have to explain like why the chain rule works? No. Uh, yeah. It's basically I'm like how you do it in homework, like okay. showing your work and okay. all that. Yeah, doing your homework and explaining it. That's essentially what that is. You know, so is one out of the 11 for each person to come up and. Yes, uh -huh. and it's just the board. absolutely. It's just one problem. You'll okay. pick it. I'll tell you what it is, I'll give it to you. And you're like, Ooh, we're going to take the derivative of blah, 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 blah. Since it has a trig function, the derivative of sine is cosine. And it has the chain rules. Therefore, you're going to do this. And so you're just explaining it. Okay. Um, this is a uh, used in Europe that's still sometimes called the ballot system, sometimes it's called different things here, but essentially is you can't memorize a whole entire topic or subject from beginning to end, right? But if you could memorize 11 problems, 20 problems even in a certain class, that in a sense gives you the essence of everything else. So it's uh, it's been used for years and years. We've kind of dropped it in America maybe 1920s, 30s or so, we kind of went to a different uh, uh, school system. But up until then, that's what it was. It was just, here's 20 problems. If you know these 20 problems, have memorized them, have said it, you know algebra one. You know, then you move on and you know these 20 sets. So in Russia, my my wife, I left when I was five, oh, sorry, Ukraine. Uh, my wife said left when she was 15, but uh, she did these. It was about, so what happens at the end of the year, in history class, she said it's about, maybe like 90 ballots oh my gosh oh. and uh it's a it's a concept and you just have a bit, about a paragraph to explain it and it's oh, a so verbal it's like final. oh it's a verbal though so what is it it's verbal so it's like we do in history it's we're just like instead of doing a midterm a final and another midterm a final if we just did that all at the end of the year yeah it'll be around the same amount 
Uh-huh. Yeah, but you have to say it. I Instead feel like it's of, easier to write it. Yeah. Does you have to do like essays? Verbal essays? Uh, yeah, there's essays involved in it, but uh, so the valid system, it's done all the end of the year. After the year is done, you come in the week, it's just a week, and each student comes in at a certain time, and you come in and you do that, and then you're done for the rest of the year. But you have to do it for every single class. Oh, and so, so finals week is all verbal finals? Yeah, and the week before you did have a written final. So you have a written oh, final okay. before. Okay. That's your sort of written finals week. And then the next week is ballots week. That is kind of cool. I think that that's nice to have that duality where you're writing stuff down, but you also have to be able to convey Explain it to it. people. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like that helps it's you like to understand it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and once you you're teaching it, so once you're teaching it, you yeah. kind of memorize really it. Do you get to use the board? You like, get to use the board, uh -huh. right yeah. Okay. And I'll have probably like a half sheets of paper, and I'll just go like this randomly, and I'll just say, okay, this is yeah. the one you're doing, and then oh, we'll gosh. go from there. Okay, it's not bad. Now let's see. So for she remembers geometry class. Geometry class, there was forty or thirty-eight problems. Oh, this is oh. the final for geometry. I mean, I guess Thirty-eight, more than thirty-eight problems on an exam, like a, a final exam. That's what you're yeah. doing for the geometry period. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. This is not... what uh, my wife. Oh, I, I was like, oh. Geometry. Uh, but it's uh, it gets complicated, right? Because you have history class with ninety, you have yeah. geometry with thirty, and then so by the time you you have a whole a staff that you're memorizing. Yeah. So that weekend before that, you literally are just doing nothing but just memorizing, 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 and then. Yeah. As each one is completed, you start. I'm trying to make us feel bad. <laughs> We're not doing that. So yeah, this feels like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, no problem. Uh, so Michelle, does she do something same? I don't know. Explain the process that she, she uses. Does similar thing with, but it's not verbal. It's written. Okay. But she gives okay. us like a list of like concepts and people and events that we have to memorize. IDs for and then we she picks up okay and what are IDs? What does that mean? We have to define them like who will wear when and then we have to do like a significant so connecting it to past events and per, like, yeah, like not what, what present, it led to what caused this event. Yeah, okay. and connecting it to the other IDs we've done. Also. Yeah. And then we usually have to do an essay too, where she'll give us five questions beforehand and then she picks one of them on the yeah. test. So, so it's the same thing, but just we write it after okay. we yeah. yeah. It's it's a similar idea, just not how loud. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Okay. Are we good? Now we're comfortable with that? Does that make yeah. sense? Okay. So 11 problems, all yours. So are we just officially that to Monday then? I want to ask you guys just to make sure what's easier for you. Is that better? I, as long as you I guys are not over the finals. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go with this one. So then it's not the same. Well, we don't, what do we have on this? We have Wednesday, history on Wednesday. And then, oh, yeah. English Wednesday. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not a test. Mm -hmm. And then no physics. Wait, is this no physics? Yeah. Uh huh. So we have the oral. The oral final will be Monday of next week, so a week from today. And then we said that one. And then the written final is going to be on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh huh. Quick question about the presentation. Sure. So we're just picking something in calculus that like any concept or something that is like interesting to us and then we're just presenting on it? Interesting or, to you that you want to delve into more detail into okay. or you connect it to something you do in life already. So it's a connection to life process here. So let me do this real quickly here. Uh, let me pause. I think uh, guys. Uh, here's uh, algebra class here. A student connected it to um, Algebra and basketball. So it's something like that. It's just a PowerPoint. Comes together here. Here's where they use. Here's uh, the approximate angles, 45 degrees for throwing. Here's so it's kind of okay. something like there's your connecting to something you enjoy and the algebra yeah. behind it here. Something like that. The other one was a person delved into the whole concept of the absolute value. So the absolute value function where originated from, where the notations came from, the changes in notation throughout the years, mm -hmm. the first naming of absolute value, and then where is it used today, and just kind of some interesting things like, oh, wow, this is so cool. Okay. So there's there's your two things, connecting okay. to life or connecting to something you've yeah. done. Okay, so let me get out of there. Okay, now we good. I just want to make sure that we're okay. Mm -hmm. Everything... Settled in your minds? Yes. Oh, do you really yeah. find another time probably to do that before Thursday? If, or yes. Uh -huh. after? Because I'm 
leaving like early Thursday morning and I will oh, be back on Monday night. Sure. So Let's do that. Um, so yeah, if I you guys email you later though, so we don't have to take up the last night. Here. I just want to do it real quick there just to make sure everybody else is okay with it here. Do, 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 do. Where are we at? Are we watching everyone's or is it a one-on-one -on -one thing? Um, you guys can, let's see. I was gonna do it one-on-one, -on -one, but if you wanna stay for the next one, just to watch how they did, that's fine too. Okay. Um, real quick here, time-wise. Uh, everybody okay with Thursday mornings for you guys? I have anatomy at 10.30, but oh, until yeah. then I can do it. No, Wait, do we have a class or do we have a, no, cause schools. Yeah, I don't know about anatomy for Thursday. Because I don't know whether there's a class that day or there's no school. Um, yeah, because I'm thinking uh, 10th is the end of the semester, so therefore there probably will not be. Anatomy meets on Tuesdays Tuesday, and Thursdays because it's weird. Uh huh. Okay, um, gotcha. We could say like nine though, because I need to leave at 10 to get to school. Will you fly today? We might. We're I'm going to put you down like that. Is that okay, Kate? Yeah. Okay, let me put that. I could probably do. Let's see. I, I, I put 10 minute increments. We can do it in 20 minutes. That's fine. You want to do 930 if you want to do that. That's fine. Um, yeah, I can do 930. Okay. I also have a class to call, but it's 1030. So. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. No, no problem. <laughs> I'm going to go like this. Um, Eli, yours, yes. you're leaving, right? So I, I don't yeah. mind doing it on a different day. Tuesday? Absolutely. Let me, how about this? I'm gonna put that, okay. And I know I'm doing um, presentations for the trick class then. Okay. So I'm gonna just slot you in one of those, one of those times. Yeah, okay. I think I'm free all day pretty much. So just whenever. Oh, cool, yeah. So maybe I'll just put you in the beginning just so I can differentiate yeah. capitals from trig. Um, I do want to take this time just to make sure everything is set or else I hate 15 emails going back and forth. Will we have corrections on our exam three? Yes, uh -huh, on Monday. You'll so have it. If you give it to us like Monday or whenever, what would we do, do on Wednesday? Wednesday? Am I well, over two? How come, the, how come the switch of oh. teachers? Uh, well, his name? The, for Mr. Zabin, he left the school yeah, when I was in eighth grade. And so then we were like combined with the other geography class. And then for Trig, I think, like, Mr. Bear, like, yeah. oh, and I was like, like, like too many classes. Oh. Okay. Yeah, there's science <laughs> and physics. <laughs> and there were multiple classes for each and Trig. Uh -huh, yeah. And so then that was too much. So then we had a new Trig teacher. Okay. I like Mr. Zabin in the SAT studies. Yeah. I think he went to the hallway. Okay, well, I know. Let's get it going. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. That actually is kind of the best way that could be possible. Okay, let's go for it here. It is being recorded as well. So I'm going to jam with it here. So these are questions that came in, and then we'll do some more questions. And if you have any others, again, submit them, and I'll do some tomorrow ish. We're good. So 119, if you guys want to go in order, if you guys have an order to your homework, that's, that's cool. Oh, okay. That's the one I told you because yeah. my only problem with 119 was the graph on the answer key. And I got the same answer as them. And when I graphed it, I got something different from what they graphed it. And I thought the graph was. Yeah, we'll, we'll handle each of those here. because. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then there's the. I don't remember uh -huh. what it was. That okay, it. perfect. Yeah, I think it's there was something. Oh, it's a tangent line. Oh, okay. That makes okay. Sense. <laughs> okay. So what is a tangent line? Let's talk about it here before we get going. Um, we're going to use it quite often, but we're going to have it in different contexts. Okay. So let me give you the application because I think it'll be better that way. So say you're in a company and your profit margins are coming up and then they're going to fall back down just because of um, whatever. Right, so you go like this, and here's your profits. Right, tangent line is just a instantaneous slope anywhere on the dot. And so, what we normally do for tangent line is this one right here, because that gives us the most amount of information. We want to want to know when the tangent line is zero, because something just happened. 
um, profits just went from being profitable and now for some reason profits are going down. And that's aha moment, exclamation point. We need to take a look at that. Uh, as far as physics go, that looks like direction, right? It goes up to somewhere, goes down. So now you've hit a high point, a uh, high point in pressure of something, high point in um, height, whatever it is, right? So that's very important to sort of have those ideas there. So in chapter three, what really they wanted you to get is you take a derivative and you plug in a certain point. Uh, that's kind of what you want to do, okay? And if you, you did that, you got the slope of the tangent line. And then eventually it says, okay, I want also the equation of the tangent line. So to, to go one step further, the equation of the tangent line, we just put in this right here. And that's our little form of all the way from algebra of how we get equations for straight lines or just for lines. And essentially that's it. So high point, a low point as well. So you have something like this. Again, that would be a crucial point. We call them minimums. And uh, it literally, it's just when the um, tangent line is zero. That's what you're looking for. That's what we're going to be doing at the next chapter quite a bit. Okay. So take a derivative and then you plug in the original points. If you want the equation, you got to know the original points for x and y. And sometimes you only know the x, so they go back to the original function, get the y value real quick here, and then plug it in. And then you got what you need. Okay, we're good there. So let's go 119. And I, I did all these out here. Desmos graph to it as well. <clears throat> so I, I did them last night. And so if you guys want to just, we'll go through them, we'll look through them. And then if you have any questions, let's let's uh, piece them through. Is not what I got, that not, and that's not what the answer he got either. I think. I think, I think Ooh, okay. Is it? Because I I'm pretty sure I, the phone the, the graph looks like ah, the answer he got. That's right. Uh, Sadie, just real quick here on your note, this guy negative four x plus seven. That's what I. Oh, isn't that what the answer key says? That's uh, what the answer key says. That the graph looks like that. The, gr the graph is definitely not negative four x plus seven because that yes, would be over here. Yes, correct. Uh huh. So the <laughs> my wrong. book, yeah, my book says one half x plus three. What? Um, so the online answer. Okay, so the online different? book is messed up. Can we Wait, see how I got the? Oh, the problem's different. Right? That's a different problem. Is yeah, it one nineteen? One nineteen okay. is y equals two over x squared plus one. Oh man. And that's probably what happened in the in the online book. They kept the original problem and kept the answer, but changed the graph to the new question from the printed textbook. Uh huh. So let me see. This is that's weird. Because yeah. I, Wait. So I think I did it right. You have the right answer, but the wrong graph for the problem because it's for the new problem. Okay, yeah. So I what's the? I'm extremely long. <laughs> sure. Sure. My question to you guys first. One nineteen. Is this what you guys? Y is equal to two root x plus one. Is that the question you guys have in your yes. online textbook? No. It's y equals two over x squared plus one at one comma three. Two over x squared plus one plus on the bottom. One. Again. Oh uh, no. Plus one is out. Is yeah. Up on top. On yeah. Uh huh. Like that. Yep. And then the point we're trying to find is one comma three. One comma three. Okay. No, let's do that then. That's so, that's the Sadie, does it help the fact that it's messed up that way? Yeah. So the only problem I have, or I don't think I have a problem anymore because their okay. graph is definitely wrong. Yeah. So the graph was to the to the previous version. Yes. Then, so uh, what should I do for that problem then? Should I just do what they said and do? Yeah. The graph? Do whichever the book says. But the graph is going to the graph and the answer key for the online textbook is is. Yeah. Uh -huh. So don't look at the graph for the answer. Okay. Don't do that. It looks sort of yeah. so. Should we do it together? Can we go through one of yeah. these just so I can? Absolutely here. So this is the new 119. <laughs> uh, two over x squared plus one. And one comma three. Okay, let's go for it here. So first things first is derivative. And Sadie, you had a question. Let's talk about it now. Um, Sadie's question was, when do you use dy dx and when do you use f prime of x? And it's just a matter how it says right here. So if you see a y over here, you're going to do dy dx. Okay. If the function was given as this. Oh, you do, do d over dx. Then you just do f oh, wait. prime of x. When do you do d over dx? Um, Is it d over if, dx? Take yeah, that's notation. So if you're going to do this right here, you would say d of that. So you're just oh. taking the derivative. 
with respect okay. to X. So that's like the long way. That's to put it, yeah, all the details are inside here. So when you do this, you say, okay, well, I have a Y variable instead of X. Therefore, I'm going to take dy dx. Technically, it's a one here, right? It just means you're taking the derivative of the y. The y uh -huh. When you jump in here, you take the derivative of this guy. Yeah. Uh, you're going to put dx over dx, and then that falls away. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, yes, please come with questions. You guys talk to me here as we go. So if we're going to say it tells us to take the derivative of that function, and we take the derivative, we say dy over dx equals the derivative. Uh -huh. Right. If we want to write out that we're going to take the derivative without doing it yet, do we do d over dx and then do the parentheses and then do what it equals? Just yeah, sure. So we're clear that because I often just do an operation like take the derivative but uh -huh. without specifying that I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So I would do d over dx parentheses and then the function. Yeah. In fact, even right here, you could still say I'm still doing the function if you still need more space to do it in, okay. right? Because you're technically you're still taking derivative both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So with this one, what I would do, I would bring the x squared up to the top, and I would have it as um, taking the derivative of 2x to the negative 2 plus 1. Are we good there? With that, then at that point, then uh, that negative 2 goes in front as a multiplier, right? Power rule. Negative 4x to the negative 3 plus zero, and eventually I got myself a negative four over x cubed is equal to dy dx. Are we good there? Oh, yeah, I did that, but I I kept it on top and bottom, but same idea. Okay. okay. Boom, okay, my derivative, done. Okay, next, let me switch over now that I want the equation of the tangent line. Okay, so what I need for the equation of the tangent line is this guy. That's nice. And uh, the original points I already have. That's three and one. That's great. So that's the point it goes through. I just need my slope out of this thing. And so let me just kind of put arrows in here. That's cool. That's good. Oh, so you're just and this comes from my derivative dy dx evaluated at whatever x you want. So in this case, it's 1, 3. <clears throat> 1 cubed and negative 4 would be my slope at that point. Oh, OK. So okay. You're, plugging in, you're just plugging in the x value into your derivative that you've taken mm -hmm. to find the slope of the, of the mm -hmm. point. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And uh, the other thing is if you, when we get to implicit differentiation, that's what they give you one and three. Um, if it had y's and x's inside it, you would plug in the one and the three, right? Because you would have y's in there if it was implicit. Okay. So that's negative four minus one then in the parentheses. Negative four. Oh. oh. Yeah, negative four x plus four, and I got myself a that right there, which agrees with Sadie's answer. Okay. Okay, guys, talk to me. How are we good here? Um, cool. And then I think the graph would be like that, or like that, and then at one comma three, it's like something like that. Cool. Uh huh. That's All right. That's, that's that's what I did when I graphed with my graphing calculator. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So for something like this on a test, uh huh, would we um use a calculator to graph this, or do you want us just to eyeball it kind of? Uh, this one I probably would not have you guys graph it. Um, just but plug in a couple things. Yeah. Even says on the directions, use a graphing calculator to graph it. Oh, okay. Can we problems on the final, these sorts of problems? Or yeah, you know? I'll, um, once we get further in, especially through chapter four, because it's applications, at the end of chapter four, there will be a non-calculator section and a calculator section. But for this final, like, that we're taking, we, will we have any huh. tangent line problems? Let me check for sure, because okay. I think I do want to put some in. I got a question. Did you get, like, yeah. a question? Nice. I think these are my favorite. Yeah. That one makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. It's easy. Good, good. Okay. So, 
You just kind of have to see what they're asking for. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I have a question for these problems in 17 and 19 on homework. Would you like us to draw a little graph on there also, or just get to the equation? 117 and 119? Yeah. On uh, 3.3? Uh, 117 just says find the derivative. Okay. Yeah, 119 says find the derivative and the equation and graph it. So would you like us to draw a little graph too? Um, I figure as long as you could do it on a, yeah, sure, just kind of just a quick little um, just sketch. It. Just sketch. Uh -huh. um, so but use your graphing calculator to sketch it. When it says use your graphing calculator to graph the function and the tangent line, you would graph the function y equals negative 4x plus 7 and then the tangent line. How do you graph Oh, sure, sure. Uh, go back the other way here. Here's your original function right here. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. That's the one you graph first, and then there's your tangent line. Okay. Okay. And let's do this one right here, Sadie. Uh, in four, at the end of chapter three, there's something called a normal line. A normal line is just something that's perpendicular to your tangent line. Oh, okay. Uh, we do that for, um, so real quick here, just, um, so let's say we're on Earth. And then here's our tangent line that's going to cross here. Uh, the, this is a tangent line. And we have a normal line. Normal line crosses the tangent line. This guy here is called a normal. And you guys probably have seen this on your homework towards the end, last last chapter, last section. 355. What's the purpose of a normal line? Sure. Um, in physics, it is the gravity force uh, on something, or is the perpendicular force of wherever you're at. Then so if you're on a on a, uh, a slant right here, right, and you have a yeah, that's that force that's coming straight at you okay. like that. Really quickly, can I ask um, if we're taking f prime of if we have an f of x function and we're going to take the derivative, I'm writing f prime of x, and I'm not going to write the whole derivative out. I'm just going to do part of it. Like, mm -hmm. or I'm going to I'm not going to write my final answer. I'm going to start the operation. How would I write that I'm taking it? Oh sure, yeah. So if you're I see again, d over d x. Yeah. So you go like this. Just real quick there. And if you're already doing, let's say you're doing a quotient rule, right? So you're doing this right here, right? If you started the quotient rule already, let's say it's like x squared on top, just real quick here, and three x on the bottom, right? And so if you already taken the derivative and you say, okay, that's gonna be two x times three x, right? Notice I've, I'm, I've done doing the derivative, right? And so you have three times x squared, it's not in a nice shape yet, but at least I've done doing the derivative, okay? But let me go one step further. If you're still wanting to take a derivative of things and you did not take a derivative of x squared yet, you can actually just do this and keep it as, I'm gonna take derivative of that. I'm gonna multiply it times that. I'm gonna take derivative of this. And if I want to say, if I have a function, x squared minus two, I'm gonna say, I don't take the derivative of that, of that but I don't do it yet. How do I write that I am about to? Uh, D over DX is still. So I still, can't use F prime of X for that? Uh, even F, prime, F, of X F prime of X is always on the outside. because functions. Only answer. Yeah, because okay. functions are always given explicitly, right? It's uh, F of X yeah. equal to this. Or so G of X equal to that. problem, you use the D over DX notation. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Absolutely, guys. I'm glad, because this is what this is for. This is for you guys finally sort of done the homework. that I've tried it, and now, OK, what's the still? Uh, things that are still bugging you guys. Yeah. Are we going to get a formula sheet for the, or should we, should we repeat it? Yeah, yeah it's it in it for chapter three. Oh, okay. And if you can't find, well. can't find it, email me, I'll send it again. It's also, it's in the textbook, right? I think you just took it. It's just the, blue, the pages on the blue. I, that's what I did here. I just went snips of, oh, okay. uh, of all the blue stuff. But there's, isn't that a list at the end of all of them? I think it's the one you guys are putting. Yeah, I think we found it last time, huh? I, I was just looking and saw it, but it's in the email anyways. Okay. <clears throat> and I didn't do the beginning, beginning ones because they were trying to explain definition of derivative and this and that. So like, no, I, I need that. I need the formula for derivative, but nothing beyond that. So. Okay. But let's go on. Let's go on so we can finish this. This is 131C, slightly different. You're trying to figure out the derivative based upon a graph of functions given. And so let's talk about that. 
Eli, I want to ask you, did you watch the video for um, 3, 310? The the logarith it. logarithmic and exponential? Mm, yeah. No? Okay. Because those, it, it's a whole new set of things. Kind of like, uh, you know how well, we did the inverse function? Mm -hmm. It's kind of something like that. It's a, it's a whole new set of thinking about. What day was that? On Monday. You... I used to, that was implicit differentiation. Or is that the 3.8 that we? 3.8 we had to watch before Monday. And then oh, because I watched that one. What okay. we did in class uh -huh. on Monday was 2.9. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'll Monday's watch class. That. Mm -hmm. It don't make sense because it's not only is it a derivative of e to the x, a derivative of anything to the x power, not only is it a derivative of a log of something, but then it's also a way to do um, things that are set inside a base and set inside an exponent at the same time. Okay. And then that's the way we, we partition those out. Yeah. So any base, any power. We do it by logarithmic differentiation. Okay, guys, let's go for it here. So 131c says this. I want to take the derivative of h. Here's my function. My function are these two functions multiplying each other. And so what we do is we take the derivative by notation. And then what we do is we have to go back. It says find the derivative of h of 4. That's what we want to do. So now we're plugging in 4s each time. And so this one is really just to calibrate your brain on are you looking at slope or are you looking at the value? So if you're looking at derivative, you're looking at slope. What's the slope of this line as we're right here? Oh. It's gonna be it's one. 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 Uh-huh, yeah, it's gonna be one. Uh, what is the value of g at four? Value g at four, 2 then 2.5. Okay, with the derivative of g at four, Oh, okay. um, now we're looking at zero, right? And then we're then f of four. And then we're looking at the value of f at four. So that's two. <clears throat> Again, just honing in those skills of what are you looking at? And then talk to me if you're ready to go on, okay? Okay, are we good with that one? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right, 151B. Oh, boy, that's going to be an interesting one. Uh-huh. Uh, we did want to get to the point of uh, increasing and decreasing and stuff like that. So, so let's go for it here. Now, uh, here's the original function. And it says find the, first of all, find the velocity function and the acceleration function. Okay, are we good there? Yes. Is it a different one again? Okay. I didn't think that we were getting functions for this one. But maybe I am looking at Oh, wait. I'm pretty sure we were, because that's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, never mind. I was looking at 159. Okay. Yeah, 159 is similar, but one we aren't getting functions. Okay, I could. I did the part A uh -huh. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, but B is. I don't remember. Yeah, part A was. Sure, sure. And we need to talk about. Uh, I'm just trying to find it here. So I have it in front of me here. Da, da, da. Okay, given function. Okay. Now, uh, part A was just find the velocity acceleration functions, right? And uh -huh. then the big step, part B. Yeah. So find when this guy is speeding up, slowing down. So let's go for it here. So first things first, uh, we're going to set our velocity function to zero because we want to know when the change of direction is going to happen. We don't know if the direction is going to go from left to right or right or left, but we at least know it's going to change direction. So factor out a six out of all this here, factor down the rest of it, and you find out t is equal to two and three. <clears throat> okay, I'll be good there, at least for the first derivative. Wait, 
why wouldn't it be never mind I was going to say, why wouldn't it be 36, but it's equal zero, not t equals zero. Cool. And then we take the um, acceleration function as well, and we solve it. It's a linear function already. So add 30 divided by 12, and we've got ourselves a 2.5. OK, and then uh, we had a question. In fact, a couple of people asked this question. When do you know something is? Um, speeding up or slowing down that's the question and so if the if the um, signs are the same it's speeding up in that direction if the signs are different it's slowing down in that direction we're good so i like to do this all the time especially these problems i like to put the kind of like the x-axis or the number line for each of these because it kind of gets me a little glimpse of things here so then I even divided out, I think I have the next slide here. Yeah, okay. but let's, that one got squished up here. So as you plug in a value that is less than 2.5 back into here, right? Let's say it's two, two times 12 is 24 minus 30. That's a negative six. So then you know it's negative all the way across. Do you guys remember doing that in algebra? Remember how you guys used to solve and then plug back in, see if it's positive or negative, no? It was for intervals, it was for inequalities. Anyways, never mind, forget that. Okay, so plug a number bigger bigger than 2.5. So if you plug that in, let's say a five, that's 60, blah, 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 that's positive. Our only zero was at 2.5, so you know that's negative, that's positive. How did we know that it was 2.5? Uh, we solved for... Um, oh, because we, what did we set that equal to? We set the, um, uh -huh. we set the acceleration function equal to zero. Why did you, you can just solve it. Just add 30 to both sides, divide by 12. Oh, okay. So we need to solve both the velocity function and the acceleration function. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and what we normally do is we just start chopping, <clears throat> chopping up the velocity and the acceleration function in pieces as we go down. And so we start off at zero, so no point of having anything be a little zero. <clears throat> and the first point that we get to is two. <clears throat> so velocity is positive, acceleration is negative. So that means it is slowing down. As it's going towards the right direction, it's slowing down. Are we good? And when it hits two, it's actually slowed down completely. And notice on the velocity function, we do have a change of direction. It's going from a positive to a negative. So that means goes, we're going to go left now. Right? Yeah. Wait, so we found out whether velocity and acceleration were positive or negative by plugging in value or by solving for the zeros. And we can see where it changes. Yeah, uh -huh. so we solve for zeros. And then what you have to do is you just have to figure out when is it positive or negative. So what you do is you kind of plug in one, you plug in a what a, a 2.5 and you plug in a four because you want to know the you want to know the signs in between the zeros it's our two and three like values of velocity or are they just like distance at which the velocity changes sure they are they are values of velocity and when values of velocity turn zero you either have a stall on something, right? It comes to the right, the stall still keeps on going to the right, yeah. or it goes to the right and turns and changes direction. So we just don't know what that is until we look for the sign changes. Once we see the sign changes, then it's a voila, awesome. Then we go about that way. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, I don't think Kate. I can do this part by myself yet. Okay, so on your graph, kind of like at the bottom left ish. So you start at negative 10. Uh, don't do that yet. Don't, don't even look at the graph. We're, we're just looking at this piece okay. right here. That's it okay. right now. Okay, that part makes sense. <clears throat> okay, right. is that okay on the bottom there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and then you can plug in, you know, we normally do this here, right? You plug in values like a one here and a one there, right? You can kind of do it in your head real quick here. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to give you still two negative values, two negatives multiplied to give you a positive done. Okay, so then that's a positive value there. 
plug in a 2.5, you know, this is going to turn positive. That's still a negative. So you get yourself a negative. So it's not so much as finding the value. Who cares about the value? You just care about the sign. <clears throat> okay. With that in mind, let's go for it here. So notice we have a plus sign before the two. We have a minus sign after the two. And so when we see that, we know we have a change of direction. It was going positive. It's going to switch. At three, we have another sign change. It goes from negative back to a positive. So again, we have another sign change. Switch of direction. So let's go for it here. So underneath here, from zero to two, is it slowing down or speeding up? I'm going to put D for slow down. We good? Oh, that is negative acceleration. Uh-huh. It's going positive direction, yeah. but the acceleration is negative. Yeah. Then we go with this one from 2 to 2.5, just that little cut right here. Now we're going towards the left direction and our acceleration is towards the left. Yeah. We have an increasing. It's because they're both the same sign, right? Uh -huh. Both the same that. sign, yep. So I, in my mind, it almost makes sense to say it's, um, it's going towards the ne negative direction, right? And the acceleration is also negative. So it's kind of- The two negatives make a positive. But both, when they're both negative, that means that it's speeding up. Yeah, so there you go. So same sign speeding up, different sign slowing down. Okay. So right here, what's the, what's the negative direction? Uh, in this case, it's left, yeah. It's going left and the acceleration is negative. What is that given? Sure, yeah. It's saying that the, uh, and you have, almost have to think about it as magnitude here, in a sense. You're going towards the left, and the the acceleration, because it's also negative, it's making the velocity going to go faster in the negative direction. Oh, so it's not negative as in slow? As no. In, oh my that's why, that's why it's, it's I different. I don't understand physics, so it doesn't, I'm confused. But... So I, I, I'm taking physics and it's still a little. No, it, yeah, and I'll say. It's different from physics mm -hmm. and it's only left and right. There's no. Correct, yeah. Yeah, that's because we can't do cool stuff like for <laughs> But uh, the, and this is kind of like, almost like I, in my mind, this is the math way of doing physics, right? This is not physics, physics. This is kind of like a, just a quick. It's the reason math. why physics works. Okay, okay, let's go the other way. Yeah, let's go this way. So we're going towards the uh, negative direction still from 2.5 to three. We're still going negative direction, but the, but the acceleration is positive. So it's actually pushing ourselves towards the other direction. It's so now it's slowing down. The velocity is slowing down. Oh, they're different signs. They're different signs, right? Velocity is trying to go left. Acceleration is positive, so it's it's pushing to the right in a sense. Okay. Change to that point. At three, it changes direction again, and now from then on out, it's always positive, positive. So now it's going towards the right, and, and the acceleration is increasing. Okay. So <laughs> go ahead, Kate. Um, wait, I need to you go with it. I need to think about it. Um, cool. So from zero to three, the velocity is a negative. We're going left. Is that right? Uh, from zero to two, because that's the first one we encounter. Velocity is positive. Oh yeah, yeah. From, right. But from two to, to three, it's two negative. To three, we're going to the left, and the velocity. Is Speeds up and then, or the acceleration speeds up and then slows down. Or the acceleration, yeah. Huh? Let me give you the graph. Let me give you the graph. Now, kind of, we're ready for the graph. If you guys look and plug in two, two and a half, and three into your original function, into this guy here, plug in a two and it says that you are at 18. You plug in a 2.5. Yeah, it says that you're 17.5. And you plug in a three, it says that you're 17. So if you, and then if you plug in a zero, sorry, I forgot to plug in the zero here because I did it, negative 10. Wait, would we even need to know that part though? Because we just need to know it speeds up from we need to graph to negative. I don't think we need to graph. Well, yeah, you'd need to graph it. This is just kind of, do, uh, the thing was speeding up or, or slowing down. That's oh, all you okay, wanted problem, to know. Yeah. But as far as graphing is concerned, you start off at negative 10 and you're going towards the right. And the velocity really, it hones you in because it, it's, you're gonna either go left, left or right in those times. So at t is equal to two, 
you're going to be at 18. If t is equal to 3, you better be less than 18 because you went towards the left direction. Yeah. Right? And at 2.5, you notice what happens right here. Halfway through, you're speeding up towards the left direction, right? And at 2.5, it started to slow down towards the left direction, right? And once you hit back to, to 17, it turns on you again. So another way to solve this would be to plug in the values and you could figure out the graph based on what you get out. You can figure out where you are positionally. And so velocity will be figured out. Acceleration yeah. still won't be figured out. Yep, yep. Okay, so their answer is speeds up from two comma two point five with that big U. Uh -huh, yeah, let's uh, let me go next slide here. Maybe this should be weird. I don't remember. So speeding up because the directions are right here. So speeding up from two to two and a half. U is just uh, from inequality notation, right? It's union of two intervals together. Sometimes we put commas, but if it's a continuous interval, we put U for union because we want to connect those. And then notice that three, there are the same signs again. So then three is going to be speeding up forever and ever and ever. Can you super quickly probably? I'm sorry. Just sure. explain how we got those numbers into those positions. Sure. Yeah. Right here. Okay. So when we chop this off, we started at oh. zero, right? Okay. The first chop happens at two. Yeah. And we look to see a same sign or different sign. So they're different. They're different. Yeah. So therefore, it's slowing down. Okay. And then we chop at two and a half because that's the next one that has any we call critical points or critical numbers. So notice the little interval from two to two and a half. It's both a negative and a negative. So oh, therefore, it's speeding up. From it's speeding two up. To 2 uh huh. Oh, okay. So same direction. Then from two point five to three. Again, the next chop is a negative positive. Then so after three, it's a down. negative negative. Then you get those the negative signs by plugging in values greater or less than two and two point five and three. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and it should be a quick. It should be a quick plug in. Right? Yeah. You're just plug looking any value less than. Not this test, and I'm just trying to. I don't think I'm gonna put it on the final either because um, it's not. It's not something that comes up quite a bit here. I mean, once uh, once you get to uh, after Calc three, and you get into engineering application, you're gonna be really doing engineering application. This is almost like a directional map of something. It's it's. A, yeah. Right, a 3D understanding, it's pushed onto a two dimensional piece just to know movement. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, 159. One thing with 159, that's the fun one. It took a little bit of time. And this was, I almost like don't want to give you guys the answers. The graph is wrong in the textbook. I'll just say that real quick here. Okay. So it, it's close, but it's not there. It reveals a cool amount of stuff, though. Um, we should just go over at least a little bit. Don't worry about it if you don't get it wrong. Let me just explain it, and we'll go from there. Not something. In fact, skip this on the homework. You don't have to turn this so in. Okay. Lost, right? Is there a possibility because I if we get the other questions first because I'm running yeah. out of time. I don't uh -huh. know. Yeah, I'm gonna go the other questions here. Yeah, but just real quickly here, just to note is when you are increasing, notice this is the function itself, right? You're going up. Yeah. If you're going up, the dots here are gonna be up right here, we good? Once you hit this plateau, so guys, so this is the function, right? I just want you guys to see at least this right here. And this is the derivative function, right? So when you hit this plateau at one and a half, that's when you have to have a little zero. Yes. We good there? Really important to have that. In the next chapter, we are going to have more continuous functions. They're going to flow nicely. But I want to know, these are such critical points right here. Critical points right here. Uh, and then this guy here, it's all zeros. So you're going to, you're going to graph this across the x-axis. We good? And it's, it's not, a the, the derivative is not continuous because the other function is not continuous. 
uh, yeah, and then the derivative function is not continuous because there's a corner, right? We call those corners right there. So notice that's where you have that break. You got a corner, it's not smooth anymore. Next chapter, we have a lot more smooth curves. So the part C was getting the acceleration off of that. So mm -hmm. how do we get to extrapolate the acceleration off the graph? Sure, then you're looking at slope that's here. I have trouble oh. judging that. I can tell when it's at zero. I can tell when it's negative. I can tell when it's like this pixel is positive, but I can't tell what this angle of the slope is. And that uh huh. Uh, a lot more work to be had there. Um, at that point, I did have to actually get the formulas for this. That was the problem. So then you're actually trying to get the formulas of these parabolas. And once you figure out the formula, then you were able to calculate the, the values did, themselves. Did, did they want us to do that? Um, it seems like they got one of them. Yeah, it got, it got too complicated. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go like this. Are we good? One, two, three, nine. Let's get to that. This is what I had to do on the back end. Here it is. Um, so I had to create the formula for each one of those and then plug in the value at zero. And that's how I knew that I had a three here. Oh, okay, yes. That's so it was a lot was more work than it should have been. Yeah, uh huh. As opposed to just looking at the graph here. Okay. And then for and acceleration, two, do the same thing. Yeah, uh huh. Uh, for acceleration, it was, um, let's see. If you're to graph the acceleration, you graph a slope, whatever that slope is. What is that? One, two, three, one, two. That's one and a half, I think. Yeah. Right? So if you were to graph the slope, it would go like this. It would be one and a half. Negative, right? Sorry, sorry. Right? It would be right here, all the way to here. And then it'll be zero. And then it'll be that's that slope right there, right? That again, that's a nice slope, right? It's a linear slope. So therefore, whatever that is, that's positive now. So it would have been like that. So your your acceleration function would have been something like that. But the, so those lines that aren't on zero, those are not straight lines, right? Or the, those those do not have a slope of those are not horizontal. They don't have a slope of zero, right? They're or do they? Uh, this, acceleration is, this, one, does. this one has a slope of zero. Yeah, this one has a slope of whatever, negative two to two, two four one. over two. That's two, yeah. Okay. As a slope of two, therefore you're going to plot it as a slope of two right over here. Yeah, so it's just not very, it's not like a huge slope. Uh -uh. Okay. Okay, let's go on. 165. Is that the next one on the list? Um, yeah. It says, um, I think your question, Zadie, was um, uh, C, how do you interpret the derivative? So mm -hmm. let's. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So let's do this here on the truth. We have time to write every single step down. If you guys just want to write the end, this is what I got at the end for the derivative. I'll let you guys work it out if you need be. Yeah, that is my fault. And that's part A. Right? You got to do yeah. a quotient rule that's sitting inside a product, right? Or sitting inside a parentheses. Okay, from there, then we jump to plug in the values here. So it's 120 when we initially start. It's zero at 10. Then it's uh, negative 14 and negative this one right here. So then we notice the population is increasing, right? Because that's what velocity or change of rate is, right? Increasing till 10, and then after 10, the population is decreasing. It could be in the millions, but it's still decreasing because we have a negative derivative. Okay, Sadie, good there for that one? Wait. Sure. Oh, this is part C right here. This is uh, plug in the value. This is C right here then. But so, isn't there a part D? Yeah, there's a part D. Uh-huh. That's what I was thinking. Okay. D has some pretty big thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got it and I did it and then I got the wrong answer. Okay. So when you're talking about the first derivative, you're always talking about again either velocity or you're talking about how much or the rate of how much is there, right? What's the rate? What's happening with the rate? I 
find it funny. There was one article, news article, that said um, uh, the rate of crime is the rate of crime is decreasing in Fresno County or something like that. Uh, let's see. No, oh, sorry, I'll wait. Da, da, da. It was the rate of the increase of crime is decreasing. It was crime a newspaper is, article. Crime is going up. Slower. Crime is still going up slower. Yeah, that's. But that they, so what? <laughs> I was like, that is so. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you serious? But everyone, everyone latches on the word uh, decrease, right? Like, oh, yeah, okay, it's great. Like, no, but the rate at which. Right. I mean, I guess that's still better than it, the rate is increasing. Yeah, sure. but it's increasing it's slower. Very, they're trying to hide the real. Yes, price. yes, yes, correct. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a lot more of these, and uh, if you guys pay attention, I should kind of mention this way. This is that little curvature. Notice the curvature. We're going to talk about concave down and concave up. Notice the curvature is like this, and notice that about somewhere over here, the curve changes. Right? We say this is kind of. We say this is concave down, right? Mm -hmm. And then right about here, that's concave up. Yeah. Notice the, okay. Yeah. And we'll talk about that is what we think about when we think about acceleration. Okay, for uh, I got to give it to you here. I just graphed the graph here. I thought it'd be kind of interesting. So here's your bacteria growth right here. Here's your 10 right there. Okay. Good, and then it spikes back down, still at 3,000. Okay, this was nasty, and I'll I can email this to you if you guys want. But I this is the derivative. I got it wrong, which is what I was talking about. I don't want to do it again. Um, I will say this here. Um, I know, Symbol Lab. Anybody mm -hmm. used that before? Let's with the remaining time. Maybe this will be a good time to sort of see it here. Um, it is a computational program online. It is free. You can get a paid version that gives you all the steps, but at least for, for the duration of what we need it for. I already forgot how to spell it all the time here. I just start plugging it in and it eventually gets there. There we go, Symbol Lab Math. And the cool thing is, yes, they do have a derivative function. They have an integral function. They have a limit function in here. So if it's the derivative of, and you, yeah, uh -huh. and uh, I don't know what we're going to do here. X to the fourth uh, divided by oh. there it is. There's a little bit of notation. Oh. That's what I want to get rid of the X in front. Uh, it does a pretty good job of things. It will do the derivative for you. So if you need help on it, uh, come on. Oh, it's equal sign. Um, sure, I'm trying to show it and then it doesn't even show up here. Well, let me erase it here. Anyways, there's your derivative. Yes. How about something simple? Okay. It'll, oh, it gives you all the steps too. And does give you a, quite a bit of the steps, uh huh. And if you want more steps, then you do pay for a, a premium version. But I figure even even with there, I think it, it does a pretty good and job. That's something I wish things. textbook answers had was how to get there. Yeah. Of just the answers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The answers way less important than. Okay, questions. I'm out of here. Sorry, I keep on. I keep on. Uh, 